In this video, we will talk about electrical safe zones, what they are and how to identify them so that we don't drill or nail through any hidden cables. The video is intended for the general public who want to know where not to put a nail and for electricians who want to know where not to put cables. Towards the end of the video, we will show you which of the wiring regulations apply. Lots of people put nails through hidden cables, especially around Christmas time when decorations go up. Some of the recent questions that have been asked have included, why didn't someone tell me there was a cable there? Or, it's a bit late now, but how can I tell where the cables are in the walls? And this poor chap on Facebook recently, anybody know a good electrician that can come out tonight? I've just nailed through the wires. So what is a safe zone? Just for information, they are now called prescribed zones. They had a name change when the 18th edition regulations were published. But we still use the term safe zones in this video. Basically, in any room where there is an electrical supply, cables or accessories with voltages exceeding 50 volts AC or 120 volts DC that are concealed from view, there will be safe zones. These are areas where a cable can be installed and if everyone follows the rules, cables will not get damaged. When we talk about safe zones, these are the areas that are safe for cables, unlikely to get damaged. For instance, we can use a socket outlet to give a visual indication of the safe zones and we can use other features in the room to show where safe zones start and stop. What is a safe zone, a prescribed zone? Cables should be run in specific zones so that we may reasonably expect that there may be cables there. If we know where the cables might be, we can avoid drilling, nailing and screwing in these specific areas and drill elsewhere. If we don't use safe zones, then we must bury the cables deep enough that a screw will not reach the cable. Or install it in steel conduit so that nails, etc. cannot penetrate to the cable. By following the safe zone or prescribed zone rules, anybody can look at a room and know easily and immediately where they should not drill or nail, etc. Where can we put the picture frame hooks? Where should I put the screws to hold this cupboard on the wall? And when it comes to how deep should we bury a cable, most people will not use a screw or a nail longer than 2 inches or 50 millimetres, and this is recognised by the regulations. Picture frame nails are around 25 millimetres in length. For roll plugs, many will choose a length of around 30 millimetres. Let's begin with looking at using socket outlets and other accessories as indicators to safe zones. What we do is look at the socket outlet, in this case, and imagine an area that extends vertically all the way up to the ceiling and all the way down to the floor. And in addition, the zone will extend horizontally in both directions until it meets a wall or a doorway. Cables can be installed in any of these areas that are assumed to be the same width as the actual accessory. Now we know where we can put cables, even just below the surface of the plaster. And we also know that we should not install cables outside this safe area. Sometimes cables do not follow the rules and might run diagonally from the socket outlet. What are the rules now? What options do we have? The diagonal area is not a safe zone and the cable must comply with certain extra requirements. The cable must be buried at a depth greater than 50 millimeters from the surface or it must have additional protection from a 30 milliamp RCD or it must be installed in earthed steel conduit. The regulations now state that all new domestic circuits should have RCD protection, but there are still lots of houses that do not. What about the tops of the walls near the ceilings? This is another safe zone area, another prescribed zone. Imagine a zone that runs all along the top of the wall that extends down from the ceiling by 150 millimeters or six inches. Cables can be safely installed in any of this area and can be used for cable runs from one part of the room to the next. What happens where two walls meet? 
and we have a corner. Wherever the wall changes direction, we should assume a safe zone. Cables can be safely installed here and we should not nail or drill at a corner. This applies not just to a corner where two walls meet inside a room, it can also be the corners of corridors, chimney breasts or other places where some structural work sticks out into the room. This safe zone is also 150mm wide and runs from the floor to the ceiling. If we look at the whole thing, what does it look like? The blue hatched areas are the prescribed zones, the safe areas where we can install cables without worrying about the depth of the cable. As you can see, it stops when it meets a doorway. We should consider what happens inside the walls next. If the wall is less than 100mm in width, then we must duplicate the safe zone on both sides of the wall. We will have no nail areas on both sides of the wall. The reason is that we know that the cable from the socket cannot be more than 50mm from both walls at the same time. Some walls will have metallic parts as part of their manufacturing process and we need to ensure that if an exposed conductor makes contact with one of these metallic parts then something will happen to make the installation safe. If the cables are not installed in earth steel conduit or earth steel trunking then we must install 30 milliamp RCD additional protection. Where it is known that a cable is not in a safe zone and is less than 50 millimeters from either wall surface, we must consider additional protection. This can be by earth metallic conduit or trunking or by 30 milliamp RCD. We must also consider cables that are run under wooden floors. For cables run below the floor, we can drill a hole through the center of the joist and feed the cable through this. The cable must be at least 50 millimeters from the top and the bottom of the joist. Another method is to use earthed steel conduit in a notch at the surface of the joist or a notch that is protected by an earthed steel covering that is at least three millimeters in thickness and substantial enough to stop a nail or screw from penetrating it. Note that there are additional regulations to consider when drilling or notching joists as any hole or notch will reduce the structural integrity of the joist. Remove too much of the joist and the building could be a disaster waiting to happen. Roof joists, for example, should not be drilled or notched. We can look at the regulations that apply now. Damage to cables by nails and screws, etc. is classed as impact damage and is covered by regulation 522.6. 522.6.201 gives rules on cables under floors or above ceilings or passing through joists. .202 is for cables installed in walls and partitions. .203 talks about cables in walls that include metallic parts other than nails or screws. And .204 are the rules for preventing cable damage to cables where the previous three regulations cannot be achieved. A little bit more detail on each. Regulation 522.6.201 is about cables under a floor or above a ceiling and they shall be run in positions that avoid damage to them by floor and ceiling fixings. Cables passing through joists shall be installed at least 50 millimeters from the top and bottom of the joist or provided with adequate mechanical protection such as steel conduit as in regulation 522.6.204.202 tells us about cables in walls or partitions and that they should be installed at least 50 millimeters below the surface or be installed in horizontal zones 150 millimeters from the top of the wall in other words the ceiling or within vertical zones 150 millimeters of any corner. The regulation goes on to talk about cables that can be run in zones vertically and horizontally from an accessory switch or socket the same width as the accessory. And then where a wall is less than 100 millimeters in thickness, the zone is repeated on the opposite side of the wall or apply regulation 522.6.204. Regulation.203 informs us 
that if a cable is installed in a wall or partition that uses metallic parts in its construction, excluding nails and screws, then the cable must be protected by a 30 milliamp RCD as per regulation 415.1.1 or provided with adequate mechanical protection. And here is regulation 522.6.204, the catch-all regulation. Where the previous regulations cannot be achieved, then cables shall incorporate adequate metallic coverings that are earthed and prevent penetration of the cable by nails, screws and such like, or be installed in earthed metallic conduit or steel trunking that prevents cable penetration or the cable should be provided with some other adequate mechanical protection. Thank you for watching, it really is appreciated, and we hope that you found this video useful. Knowing how to identify prescribed zones or safe zones will help to protect cables and will reduce the chances of accidentally putting a nail through a cable. Subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video and you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type Learn Electrics, or one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.